Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast, Episode 4. <laughs> got a lot going on in this episode. We've got a viewer that's written in with some trouble with his carbon steel seasoning. Going to get into that. We've got some whole grains I ordered off the internet. Going to take a look at the big box battle between Sam's and Costco with some mozzarella cheese. Going to do a mini review, but what I want to get started with is Debouye Carbon Steel Skillets, the Mineral B Pro models that we talk about quite a lot around here. Got one right here. Reviewed this uh, last year, been using this pan very heavily for over a year now. It's one of the ones I recommend quite often to people with flat top stoves. It's got a stainless steel handle that can go in the oven. You can season on the stove top or in the oven. It's very thick, three millimeters thick. Very good pan for people with flat top stoves. One of my favorite pans. Well, it turns out that Debouye has come out with a new model of this pan, an updated Mineral B Pro. So today what I want to do first, happen to have one right here, the new model, is take a look at what's been updated and what's been changed. What are the new features of the new pans? Now, the main body of the pan in the new model is the same. Three millimeters thick in this size, so a very thick, heavy pan. What has been updated and changed is the handle, and it's fairly significant what they've done to it. The first thing you note is that the older handle, it comes out of the body of the pan, rises, then continues on upwards at a fairly steep angle. The updated handle comes out of the body of the pan, rises up, and then flattens out fairly significantly. So the handle has a much flatter angle on the new model. Now both handles are still attached with two rivets. I noticed that the rivets are a little bit wider on the new model, so that might give it a little bit more horizontal stability if you're moving the pan around. Now if we turn these pans over and look at the underside of the handles, on the older model, if this were a golf club, I would almost call this a cavity back design. It's really kind of open underneath, and if you look at it, it kind of looks just a little bit like a face. Hey buddy, would you like to taste one of my wife's pan sauces? Now, in all honesty, I shouldn't make too much fun of my wife's pan sauces. I'm actually very thankful for them. It's been years since I've had to buy a can of Flex Seal. Now, on the newer model, the handle is very solid to the body of the pan. You can see the Debouye branding on there. That's my little son coughing in the background. See the Debouye. Uh-oh, we've dropped a juice. Also has a little bit of a medallion. You can see the medallion on both sides and that Debouye branding stamped in there very prominently. Now both the old and new handles have finger grooves underneath. The older handle was relatively flat from side to side on the top. But what I noticed really prominently about the new handle is that it has this indentation. Your thumb kind of sits in there kind of like in a little groove. Now on some of the strip steel handles you see on other pans it's more of a V shape. This is a kind of smooth, roundish shape. Now there's nothing wrong with the old handle, but I gotta say I like the way this new handle feels. When I pick it up, the pan has a nice weight and balance to it, and I notice that my thumb kind of naturally nestles in that new thumb groove, so I do like that. Now these things have been out of stock for a while, people are having trouble finding them, but if you shop around now, I think they're back in stock on the Debouye site and on Amazon, so you can probably find what you're looking for if you're in the market for one of these Mineral B Pros. Okay, while we're on the subject of carbon steel, let's help out our good friend Fox Freeman, who wrote in with some problems with his seasoning. Let's see if we can help get him back on track. He says, Scott, you inspired me to get this pan. I'm ready to toss it in the lake. You're welcome. He goes on to say, he seasoned it over gas, been good but never great. He gets rust. Mm, we don't want rust. He says he's reseasoned it with potatoes and vegetable oil several times. Bottom is gummy or rusty. And after he cooks with it, he cleans it with salt and a paper towel. Okay, so I think a lot of us have been in this boat, especially when we're new to carbon steel. We kind of get led down this path of obsessing over seasoning rather than led down the path of worrying about cooking delicious food. So let's see if we can get Fox back on the good path here. Now, what he says here is that He's been reseasoning with potatoes and vegetable oil. What he's doing is that Matford method where when a pan is brand new, they say to use potato peels, oil, and salt for its initial cleaning and seasoning. Once a pan has been seasoned initially, you don't ever need to do that potato peel, oil, and salt method ever again. 
that is only for when a pan is brand new. Any subsequent seasonings can be just maintenance touch-up seasoning. Now let's talk about the rust. If he's getting rust, that kind of tells me that something is going awry when he washes and dries the pan. These pans should really never be in contact with water for any longer than it takes to just wash the pan out. And that shouldn't take very long once you get a good seasoning. So once you wash your pan, dry it immediately with a clean dry towel. Don't stick it in a dish rack. Don't use the damp towel you've used to dry 20 other things. Then stick it on a burner for 20, 30 seconds or so. On a gas stove like I have, 20, 30 seconds is fine. It may take a little bit longer on an electric. But just heat the pan up so that any excess moisture evaporates off of there. After that, you want to apply a couple of drops of oil and wipe it down really well as a protective layer. But here is the key on that. Let that pan cool back down to room temperature 10, 15 minutes or so before you put on that protective layer. Else you're adding oil to a moderately hot pan and you're going to get sticky, gunky mess all over there. He also says he cleans it with salt and a paper towel. If you find yourself needing to use salt to scrub these pans on a regular basis, maybe what you should do is spend more time on your cooking technique rather than worrying about the seasoning. Change the way you preheat your pan, change your cooking temperature, change when you add your food. Work on that cooking technique and I think you'll be surprised at how non-stick these pans really are once you get your techniques dialed in. Now let's talk a little bit about whole grains. As you might remember, I reviewed that Como Fitibus Classic Grain Mill a little over a year ago. My wife and I have been using that thing heavily. We make all of our own bread now at home. I think in the last year we've only bought loaves of bread at the grocery store two times, and that was around going on a family camping trip, so we couldn't take our own stuff there. So anyway, making our own bread, we really like it, but we grind our own grain. Now you can buy whole grain wheat berries at your local grocery store often, but they're fairly expensive if you buy them in small batches. So I've been buying them off the internet. Now if you buy in bulk off the internet, they typically come in these big five gallon pails, almost like you were buying primer at Home Depot for a home remodel. They typically have a seal around the rim. I bought one of these lid removal tools, it really helps out getting the lids off of these things. These are food safe buckets. They have these little packets inside that kind of absorb any kind of moisture. You know, sealed up in these buckets, these grains can have a shelf life of 25 years or more, probably longer than my shelf life. So I don't worry too much about the storage. What we typically do is have some glass canisters up here in the kitchen, fill those up, and then keep the big bins down in the storage room. I've had pretty good luck ordering from Amazon. They come in quickly with that Amazon Prime. We've got some Augustine Farms there. Also recently tried some Pleasant Hill Grain. I ordered from there. Bought four buckets. I got a hard red, a hard white, a soft white, and some Durham to try and make some pasta. 170 pounds worth of grain. I got free shipping on that. How that works, I don't know, but somebody's paying somewhere. Now, the one thing I note is with Amazon, everything came in pretty darn quickly, a day or two, if it was in stock. Pleasant Hill Grain, everything was in stock, but it took me 24 days to receive my order. Now, I'm happy with the order once it finally arrived, but if you're doing this for any kind of prepper type thing to have a food supply, you almost need to prep a few weeks in advance to become a prepper. Now, in a future episode, we'll get into actually grinding some grain, but I did want to kind of show the difference in some of the grains. Here from left to right, you can see hard red wheat, hard white wheat, soft white wheat, and then the durum. So definitely some differences in color, some differences in size of the actual wheat berries. I think it's pretty interesting to look at these things up close. Now, this is about as good as I can do with my current camera equipment. I wanted to get an electron microscope, but my wife said no. I never get anything fun. But for a little quick test here, I did make some pizza doughs. I made a couple of pizza doughs with store-bought flour. Those are the lighter ones here. I also ground up some hard white wheat and used that ounce for ounce in the same pizza dough recipe. After a couple of days of fermenting in the fridge, all the doughs seem to have just about the same texture. You can definitely see a different color with the fresh ground wheat. My wife rolled out the pizza doughs, got those in. The texture of the final pizza turned out about the same. Color's a little bit different, but I gotta say with the hard white wheat, it had just a little bit too much of a fresh bread, a little bit too much of a strong wheat flavor for me for a homemade pizza. So I'm gonna give that a thumb sideways. We'll try some different wheats and different grinds in future episodes. 
Okay, and since we're talking pizza, let's talk mozzarella cheese. Transition into this episode of the big box battle between Costco and Sam's. I was at both stores this past week looking for mozzarella cheese. My wife and I make a lot of margarita pizzas. We like that pre-sliced Bel Gioioso mozzarella. Comes in a two-pack. Makes a really nice margarita pizza. Now both Costco and Sam's carry the Bel Gioioso. Sam's gets the win in this episode though because they got the same cheese at a much better price. Okay, now for our 30 seconds of knowledge. I want to talk a little bit about pastry pasta rolling boards. Made out of wood, kind of like a cutting board, no moving parts, no need for a big in-depth review. But these things are pretty, pretty handy and pretty neat to have around the kitchen. What makes them unique is this lip here. That allows you to put the board on your counter, slide it up by the edge, and if you're kneading dough, rolling out your pizza, rolling out your pasta, you can put a lot of downward force on there. Keeps the board from sliding across the countertop. Also have this nice fence on the back, keep your ingredients from making a big mess. Now we use ours a lot when we're making pizzas, when we're rolling out tortillas. These things are pretty neat to have around. If you do a lot of baking at home and don't have one, I think they're worth a look. I give these pasta pastry rolling boards a thumbs up. Okay, hope you enjoyed this episode. Go forth, do great things. Come back and watch some videos when you get a chance. Check out the shopping links below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast. <laughs>